Hi guys! Welcome back to our channel. This is Ephraim and you're watching Planting with Ephraim Grace. Another day, another plant to discuss. Ito na naman ang inyong hardinerong kapitbahay na sasabing, tara, usap tayo. Hi guys! Buhay! Welcome back to our channel. This is Ephraim, your hardinerong kapitbahay. Magandang araw mga kapuso, kapatid, kapamilya at mga kapitbahay. One of the easiest plant to keep is the family of philodendron. They possess a massive plant structure and produce a big great leaves once being once matured. And each one of the species of philodendron have a unique characteristics and one of the examples of this particular plant is this beautiful philodendron melinoni. Okay? Philodendron melinoni. This particular plant is a juvenile Palamang. So, ibig sabihin, medyo bata-bata pa lang to. This plant is also known as the Lazy Tree Philodendron. And this one is an origin of tropical rainforest of Central and South America. So, ganun siya ka, ka gaganda. Okay. So, the Philodendron melinoni is both terrestrial and epiphytic. So, pag sinabi natin terrestrial, pwede siyang mabuhay sa lupa. Nakatanin siya sa lupa. So, pwede ganun. Pwede siyang tumubo sa lupa. And the other one is it is epiphytic, pwede rin naman siyang um, uh, kumakapit or a species that are capable of growing on the branch of the tree or climbing of the tree. So pwede siyang climbing, pwede siyang um, uh, dun siya nakatira sa mismong branch ng puno to better collect some sunlight. Okay? So in nature, this particular species of Pilodendron melinoni is found growing high in the canopy perch out on the limb of a tree. Ibig sabihin lang nun, siya ay makikita at matatagpuan dun sa mga pinaka-base part ng ating mga puno. The undersides of this particular juvenile leaves, as you can see, yan, is actually um, reddish in color. Tapos, nagbabago itong reddish in color na to into a matte green. So, ibig sabihin, nagbabago pa rin yung kanyang structure. Pero, ang papasin natin, na medyo hindi na masyadong reddish yung kanyang structure up to the up, up to the veins pa lamang o sa lip veins pa lamang natin makikita yung may pagka reddish ng color niya also as you can see here the plant have a very wonderful yung pinaka tinatawag nating picho kung saan doon naka nagdudugsong yung ating uh, pinaka stem at saka yung pinaka leaves very sturdy na may pagka fleshy yung kanyang daho, yung kanyang pinaka-pichol o yung um, between the leaves at saka yung ating uh, pinaka-plant. Okay? So, kaya uh, this particular juvenile uh, philodendron melinoni is actually an ideal plant uh, especially uh, for the meantime sa loob ng bahay. Pero as it grows, syempre it will occupy a, uh, a space in your house. So, Kung ito ay um, malaki na, so it's better for us to put this one in a shady part of our garden. But as it is a juvenile at medyo kaya pa nating i-maintain yung ating uh, pilodendron melinoni sa ating loob ng bahay, then we could keep this inside our house. And of course, kung malaki naman ang bahay natin, that would be better for us to keep this particular plant inside our house. Now today, we're going to have a repotting of this plant. And we're going to look into the soil medium that yung binilhan natin, kung anong kanyang ginamit. Okay. So the soil medium that is actually used here is actually more on yung tinatawag nating mga uh, coconut husk. Now the reason why they are using that particular coconut husk is because uh, the coconut husk tries to um, maintain the moisture of the, of the soil mix or of the soil medium. Um, ang, ang ating apilodendron melinoni naman kasi ay hindi na ang ilangan ng napakabasang um, soil medium. Instead, kailangan lamang niya ng medyo moist na soil medium. Kasi pag ito kasi ay masyadong basa or clog yung kanyang soil, the tendency of this particular plant is or this particular um, yung, 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 yung roots ng ating plants ay mag-rotting. So hindi siya excuse for rotting. Okay, so as you can see, ayan, papasin natin na lumalabas na yung ugat niya, ito, okay, so parang mali yata yung ating ginagamit ng, ginagamit na soil medium. So, 
Pero let's see kung ano mangyayari. Okay? So, this plant, so I'm going to transfer with this one, like with this particular deep type na na ano, na na pot. Okay? So, we're going to uh, have this. Okay. So, let's proceed. So, um, in terms of the soil, as I told you a while ago, the soil mix that is actually being used here are the um, coco, coco wire. Pero, you could use also some uh, past draining soil provided that it is also holding some moist doon sa ating plants. Wow! See? Sabi ko na nga ba eh. The most of the philodendron actually, um, they are uh, very vast yung kanilang pagpuproduce ng kanilang root systems. Okay? Kaya kung mapapasin natin, nagahag na rin yung kanyang roots doon sa ilalim. Especially sa ilalim. So, uh, pero the good thing about this one, pwede naman kasi mag-adapt yung ating philodendron. Since na kaya naman yung uh, kumapit sa mga puno uh, kaya naman ay matumira sa mga branches so pwede siya mag-adapt in any type of uh, material na uh, na hindi talaga uh, natural na soil so pwede natin gawin yun so I'm going to add up a little bit of soil here okay so yung soil na aking ginamit dito is still meron pa rin konting mga organic material such as uh, yung mga dead leaves syempre mga uh, konting ano to, dead leaves at saka yung mga coconut husk yan tawa. so pagkakasahin natin ng konti I think kailangan kong basta bawasan ng konti yung ating sides okay? so baba ko muna to okay. now in terms of the light, sabi nga sa inyo kanina the light itself okay, yung light na kailangan natin dito is actually partial partial shade no direct sunlight, you know what kasi yung ating direct sunlight it could really scorch or yung pwede niyang i-damage yung buong dahon natin, okay? And that is actually not nice sa ating klase ng pilodendron na to. Kasi nga, they are the one na, na madali silang ma-burn doon sa ating uh, material o doon sa ating uh, excessive amount of sunlight. So, the weather condition definitely, uh, especially sa mga cities, na napakatindi ng sikat ng araw as well as the heat na talaga nakakasunog. So, I think the best way para makapag-survive ng ganitong klaseng halaman is to keep it inside our house. Okay. Now, in terms of the temperature, um, sabi ko nga sa inyo, ideal siya sa ating indoor plant kasi this plant could stand up doon sa uh, temperature na 18 to 22 degrees Celsius. Okay. Yun doon siya binaka-best, kumbaga. So, 18 to 20, 22 degrees Celsius is the best uh, temperature for this plant. Okay? So, medyo itago natin ng konti yung soil. So, in this case naman, wala naman tayong poplamahin dun sa, soil, sa ating roots. Kasi yung ating naman roots kasi ay kayang-kaya niya mag-adapt or mag-change ng kanyang structure. Okay. Ayan. So, siguro... Uh, in terms of the watering, sabi ko nga sa inyo kanina, it is very important to keep the potting or the, to keep the potting soil uh, dry out, most probably. Uh, kailangan hindi nagkaklag ng water, pero moist yung kanyang material. Uh, uh, if, you want, uh, if you water this particular plant na medyo marami, the tendency of this plant, ang kanyang kinaka-reaction ay mag-turn into yellow yung kanyang, mag yung kanyang dahon. And we don't that uh, we don't want that to happen here. Now, if we're keeping this inside our house, syempre, mas less yung kanyang evaporation, or yung evaporation of water sa ating plant. So, medyo, um, we could water this siguro mga once a week or once or twice a week. So, magandang, uh, yun yung, yung pinakamagandang practice siguro natin. Kasi if we're going to keep this inside our house, ma medyo shady naman, wala naman tayo masyadong source ng heat. So, it's best for us to water this uh, siguro once a week damang. Okay? Now, uh, fertilizer. So, the fertilizer, magandang fertilizer dito ay could be applied twice uh, a month. So, that will be ideal for this plant. And the fertilizer that we recommend here to use ay yung tinatawag nating liquid fertilizer. Ibig sabihin ng liquid fertilizer, yung nadidissolve sa ating liquid or isinasama natin bilang pandilig. Now, toxicity. This particular plant, syempre, toxic almost lahat ng pilodendron. Meron siyang tinatawag na calcium oxalates. 
na nakaka uh, nak, nakakaapekto sa mga animals and even sa mga young o sa mga bata. Okay, so we have to keep this away from do uh, from from the from the pets as well as from uh, our kids. Okay? Now, the best pollinator, syempre, um, this particular plant has uh, me medyo we could consider yung pollinators niya. Ang pollinators niya hindi butterfly, hindi hindi mga ano eh, hindi hindi bees. Ang kanyang pollinator ay beetle. Okay? And this is also a wonderful attractant sa mga birds o sa mga ibon. Now, um, the pro best propagation for this plant ay seeds. Okay? So, nagkakaroon siya ng seed dun sa kanyang pinaka-axials. So, yun ngayon yung own, um, um, para siya nagpo-form ng berry. Berry. Okay? Now, um, the unique characteristics of this particular philodendron mel ma melanondi oh, tama, melanondi, or lazy tree philodendron is that yung kanyang um, seeds ay kailangan matanggal or may alis dun sa kanyang pinaka- pinaka contain uh, con uh, doon sa kanyang containment doon sa pinakalalagyan ng pinaka uh, pinaka berry okay bakit kasi yung plants pa yung mismo yung pin mismo pinaglalagyan ng berries pala ay merong chemicals that inhibits the germination of the philodendron kaya hindi siya basta-basta tumutubo so kailangan muna tayong kailangan muna siyang i-remove ng birds or ng other animals para magkaroon siya ng seed germination. But as long as it is in there, doon sa ating, um, sa ating lalagyan ng seeds or seed pods, so uh, hindi siya magkakaroon ng propagation or hindi siya tutubo, kumbaga. Now, uh, one of the benefits for this particular plant, syempre, it's a good air purifying agent. So, kaya nga maganda siya ilagay sa loob ng ating bahay. Okay, so guys, here is our uh, lazy tree Philodendron, okay? Napakaganda ng plant na to, especially if we're going to keep this inside inside our house, and we could uh, we could have this also as a gift for our uh, loved ones or do sa ating mga uh, mga nina ninong. So that will be a very nice nice part of their collections, okay? Um, so uh, if you have some comments, suggestions regarding with our plant. Please make a comment to our YouTube channel, Planting with F and Grace. Also, uh, uh, mag-iwan kayo ng mga messages sa amin. We would really welcome that and we love to answer back your questions regarding with a featured plant for today. So, uh, also, don't forget to add up to your list our FB page, si Marigracia Tanglihim na Hardin. Okay? See you again next time for another wonderful time para pag-usapan ng iba't-ibang klase ng halaman. So thank you and goodbye.